don't you know that from coast to coast where there's dope, there's hope, where there's dope, there's hope, sheesh, wait, is it lit? Uh, don't you know. Woo woo. Oh boy. We back. We are back in the building. Back again. Ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. boys and girls. Cats and dogs. It's your boy Earth Tone. And your man Peasy P. And this is the Herbal Tea Podcast. Yeah. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back, niggas What's and up? bitches. What's going on? What episode is this? This is six. Seis? Seis. Oh, shit. I mean, I know a little Spanish. Why you don't look surprised? You know what I'm saying? I'm not a count. You know so. what I'm saying? Like this, like this. One or the other. Episode six, the Herbal Tea Podcast. Back in effect. Back, back in, in effect. action. Mm-hmm. It's your neighborhood, homies. What's up, man? man. You been around the way? Listen, I've been around the way. I'm, I'm you still a, I'm out just, here I'm moving this shit. around the way type bitch. What's going on? I know you, you know don't what what sit saying? still. You don't like to sit still, so I, I know you've been out here. I don't. I've been out here like all the time. People are surprised. Like, as soon as my damn brace, they told me that I could walk around outside in the brace. It was a rat? It was a Rizzy. <laughs> it was such a Rizzy. I know you couldn't wait no to get out of that No idea shit. how much mental anguish I went through after that surgery and having to stay home. I Trust me, I know. I empathize. <sighs> I empathize with you, brother. But listen, we happy to have you out, out and about, back in these streets. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Always, we're going to take it to the streets later. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? But yes, for sir. now... Y'all know what this is about, man. Like it's you shouldn't even be surprised reviews. no more. We by this point they shouldn't even be surprised. It shouldn't be. Q plus, LGBTQ, artists, music. And we got a whole great. We got a slew. We got a menu for y'all, man. We wanna Are y'all ready? We just gonna dive right into. It. I feel like just. I feel like going swimming. Today. I feel I'm just like I'm dive ready into to dive. It. Let's just dive into it. So our first artist. Who we got? If you will, please. Who we got? Post the photo up of the album cover. It be before I get this drum roll. Let me get the photo up. <laughs> Let's get the photo up. <laughs> It'll be. <laughs> Jame and Michael Madrano. Hey. And they have a single out called Run Like Hell. Look at this cover. I like this little cover. I like what this they about little to do? Oh, they on the track. Yeah. They on the track at the starting line. Track. Yeah. Run yeah. Like yeah. Hell. Run Like Run. Hell. Oh, uh, like, you got it? You see? You got you it? You see? For those of you listening, we apologize, but they sitting here, they, they on the track. Right. You know what I'm saying? The joint is called Run Like Hell. Facts, And they facts. on the track. So that's all we're going to get, y'all. But go ahead. So that's go ahead, all go it ahead, is. Go ahead, go ahead. Dope album cover. This guy, he is a Los Angeles native. Okay. He is a proud Toyota Corolla owner. Interesting. Proud. Proud. I Very fuck proud. with that. I fuck with that. I fuck you with Toyota. Think. I used to want a Forerunner back in the day. Mm-hmm. Toyota Forerunner. That was my shit. This ain't really about you. It's about this oh, guy. Shit. James. I'm just trying to throw in a little. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Damn, he's just shutting down my spice. Fuck it. He just wanted to make sure fuck you it. keep it. You know, rain. Reel it in. Reel it in. Reel it in. Got you. All right, he is of Dominican and Irish heritage. Okay. Age 24. Interesting mix. Formerly part of a band called The Penthouse. And it's a band that he formed with his college buddies. He uh, used to go to Berkeley College of Music that's based in Boston. Okay. You know, Berkeley College. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Where Megan Trainer came from, a few other artists <laughs> have graduated from there and gone on to have really successful they careers. They just molding stars, huh? Yeah. Okay. That's where they do. That's one of the... One of the places he um he moved to the West Coast where he currently resides. The band broke up as of March 2019, and since then he's been putting out a set of solo singles about since June 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, starting with one one called "By," and he has a EP entitled "Harmless" slated for release on February 25th, which just passed. So he okay. has an EP coming. Um. And that's where this single comes from, Run Like Hell. Got you. Okay. So, you know. Oh, so this is off of EP. This is off of EP. That is out now. That is, might be out. I didn't really see him announce it, but he did announce it before. That's how, you know, I found out about it. But I don't know if it's out yet. You got to check that shit out. But for now, he has this single, Run Like Hell, with Michael Madrano, who is uh, a producer. That he um, that he met out in in LA. Ah, okay, that's who that is. Yeah, and helped them do do a little bit of co-writing on this record as well. Okay, and they have Michael Madrano. Um, I don't really know too too much about his history, but he's like uh, he's a really really talented songwriter because I hear the lyrics, 
in the song and like mm-hmm. I hear you I hear the songwriting quality mm-hmm. go up and mm-hmm. sometimes that's what you need you know what I'm saying you need a little bit of co-writing help to kind of elevate the quality of the song or for the relationship yeah absolutely so you know with this song I gave it a 70% loud oh shit look at that 70% loud on this loud. record Bring I out the speakers. like this song he has a really nice vibe like nice voice, very smooth. Yeah. It gives the production gives me sad boy, mm. you know, emo, little Drakey uh-huh. type situations. You know what I'm saying? And I'm kind of with that because that is kind of his vibe. That's his real uh online. Like I connected with him on Instagram. Did you? Did you now? <laughs> I did. Okay. I got into his what Instagram. What y'all connect about? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> you said that kind of casually, like yeah, I connected with him on Instagram. He you know is a really, really nice guy. The nice cat. I just wanted to uh, actually connect about where he is from, and you know, just about his his identity because he doesn't really have a lot of bio info by That's himself true. out that, there. What what were we what saying, we just last saying in the last episode? You heard us, yeah. All right, I'm leaving. And you. the only reason I left it alone was because you know he hasn't you, really done record connected. and. Earth told him I fucking hurt you. Y'all was connected. Fucking hurt you. But anyway, yeah, he's, you know, he's got that, he's got that vibe. He's just, he's, he gets introvert vibe. Okay. Generally speaking. So this song matches him perfectly. Mm, you know what I'm saying? That's, okay. that's what I like about it. Um, songwriting co-written by Michael Madrano, who's a singer-songwriter getting a lot of LGBT love. Billboard Proud, Billboard Pride, excuse me. And, um, yeah, Billboard Pride is where you see a lot of Michael Madrano. That's kind of where I saw him. Gotcha. You know, okay. kind of. He, so he's getting that kind of love. That's what's up. So, that's what so where's, where, is he enough. from L.A.? Um, I don't know. I don't really know where he's from. Okay. Is it another I can't, thing? Where you from? We don't yeah. know. I don't know. Okay, so James. there's not a whole lot of love. I like his name, James. James. That's um, interesting. Let me see. Let's see. Benefits from the Relatable Lyrics. And they are expressed pretty poetically. Sounds as a song about possibly going back to something you left behind that brought you pain. Mm. So that was a note that I wrote to myself about it. And that's kind of what I felt. That was, I just like that that type of insight. I related to it a lot. Like run like hell from whatever's calling you back. Because yeah, the reason, like, you, the like, reason nah. you left it in the past is the reason it's in the past. It's like, magnetic. Don't it's let it catch. You, back, but you know nah. what I'm saying? They 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 always say like look but don't stare. Mm. So, you know. That's that's all that's everything this song gave me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 70% loud. 70% loud that's from me. That's a night. Okay, okay. Well, listen, we are not too far off. Mm. I gave it a loud as well. Okay. 65% loud. 65. So we right, right, we're there. right there. We're right on the mark. I'm okay, Jane, we okay. see you. Jane. So Michael Madrano, you said that's the producer. He is the singer, songwriter, producer of the Because I was wondering, because I couldn't distinguish. It didn't sound like it was two different artists on the actual song. No, so it was, was like, all oh, James little... singing the vocal, gotcha. and then the songwriting came from And this Michael came Madrano. out January 28th. January 28th. 2020. Yep. And like you said, it's off of his EP that... Just came out in, yeah, on the twenty fifth. Yeah, that uh, you said. Yeah, what's the it? It was due February twenty fifth. That was the day he announced for it. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you know, okay, um, we're filming this. Well, it should a be a week out. before, like maybe a couple days before that. So we won't really see it come out until. But it should be out. By it the time should be out by this. the time you guys see yeah. this. Okay, but I mean, like I said, I gave it aloud, the sixty five. Um, I think you hit all of the same. Markers that I heard, like Facts. I like the beat. The beat was dope. It's a nice, smooth little. It's an airy singer songwriter beat. Yeah. It's made for you to get in your bag and talk your shit. It ain't really too much going on. It's a nice little sound bed, but it, it gives you a lot of room to play with the air in the pocket and the. And then he gives you that those airy little melodies. Mm. He's like easy to catch yourself. It's easy to hurt yourself. It's easy to run like hell. Yeah. Like he kind of, he's just giving you like where he at. He's like, it's like streams of thought almost. Yeah, kinda it's like he's telling writing. you, he's telling you run like hell. Like exactly. it's easy to get caught up in that shit. It's just as easy to run away from exactly. that shit. So you got a choice. It's <laughs> yep. a it's a dope little like play with duality. Yeah. And, shit. Uh-huh. and then the lit, I like the way he, the, the performance of it, the delivery is kind of slurred a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like if you listening and trying to decipher the lyrics, you kind of have a little 
trouble on certain points. Like I was trying to decipher and figure out what he was saying at certain points, and it was like it sounded like he doing it on purpose. Like yeah. he kind of bleeding some of the words into each other, and then he got like a airy, raspy flow to his voice, so it kind of lends to yeah. that anyway. And I thought it kind of added to the whole shit. I liked it. Absolutely. Um, he had the lyric where it said, he said, I want to quit you cold because that's all you've been. I deserve good love. You deserve what you get. Mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, that's kind of just, like, that's some sit. And you just like, you know what? You've been thinking about this motherfucker this whole time. You just like, you know what? I'm sick of this shit. Like, yeah. I'm sick of your shit. <sighs> And I just want to, I want to pay you back for the way you've been treating God me. God damn. And you don't deserve shit. Like, you deserve whatever you get, but I deserve better than this shit. I so relate to that He kind of just put 000. that like, ooh. And then he just singing that shit so effortlessly. And he's like, so, yeah. And it's just like you said, he on these sad boy emo shit. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. I like the shit a lot. I thought they made a good match, like the producer, singer, songwriter. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much they worked on the actual songwriting part, but they put out a pretty dope song. I fucks with the shit. Um... I enjoyed it. It was a pleasant surprise. I haven't heard much about James. I've never heard of him before this song. I've yeah. never heard of Michael Madrano either. Um, so it's dope. It's always that's the, kind of one of the biggest things I enjoy about the show is discovering this new talent, this Q plus energy, these projects that's coming out. It's a lot of music out here, and they are surprising us left and right, like every time. This was one of those joints. Like I really fuck with it. It's always interesting to see, especially when we agree on the same joint. Right. That kind of says something. I think that speaks a lot because we have very specific and different tastes as far as what we like. So we can agree, especially have the same kind of insight on a song. And I think that says a lot as far as uh, the quality of it. So For sure. Definitely go check that shit out. Jame. And Michael Madrano. Run, run Like, like Hell. hell. Um, streaming on all platforms, man. Let us know what you think in the comments. Hit us up. Check it out, man. And, and you know. Let us know if you agree or disagree. We kind of agreed on this one, so it'll be interesting. Y'all want to debate with us? Let's do it, you know? Um, But who we got next, man? Let's keep it rolling. Who we got next? Keep it rolling. Let's keep it going. Keep it motherfucking rolling. Let's see who it is. Oh, man. This is an interesting one. So we have Q Plus artist Chris Conde. All right, bad. Shout out to Chris Conde. Shout out Um, to Chris. Don't forget the cover. Oh, yes. Let's switch it up. Let's hold get up, the cover hold going. up. Okay, Come on, okay, man. James. Okay, James. Yeah. Homie James. We, sh- we finished with this that. Out. This is a very interesting cover. Look yeah. at Chris. Okay, Chris. So, for those of you who can't see it, he, his album cover is kind of crazy. It looks like a fucking Japanese magazine cover for like some anime, you know, comic book or some shit. But then he got a picture and it's him in like an astronaut helmet. Right. Look like he butt ass naked. Mm-hmm. He's tatted up crazy. Mm-hmm. He's not a twink. He ain't no like twink is totally small bad. boy. He is that twink is literally the opposite. Yeah, the exact of opposite what of what he is, is. What's on this picture? This is a big boy. And he proud of it. <laughs> he proud he got of the it. Twi- he got queer tatted up on his abdomen like Tupac, like tatted. the Thug Life Tupac. Yeah. Joint, but he got queer. queer. Like his shit is like. He out here with it. He ain't playing around. Not playing. The album cover is crazy. It's eye catching. And then like I like the font of this shit. He got the font and like electricity and shit. But shout out to Chris Conde. Um, he's a he identifies as bi gender, which is actually a term I kind of I'm not that familiar. Like this is a, a newer term for me. Yeah, this is the first time I actually heard it, and it makes a lot of sense now that I heard it. But mm-hmm. he kind of he said he doesn't necessarily identify as a cis man but he doesn't necessarily identify as a woman either so he's kind of like teetering on both like one foot in one foot out he's like this is what they call two spirit mm, two interesting. spirit okay. people who simultaneously identify as male and female as opposed to like a gender queer yeah. which they identify as themselves they don't identify with either either oh so this is like both the, yeah either. this is Got both you. that's okay. how it goes he's um, half Mexican half European descent mm-hmm. um, based out of San Antonio Texas shout out to Texas um and he also works as a journalist for a magazine yeah so that's kind of like his day job which I thought it's always interesting to see like how the backgrounds of these queer artists relate to like, you know, our situations and what we going through in life. Facts. Like we all know those artists out there that got to work regular day jobs, 
you know, to support their dreams and their goals and what they're working towards. You got to mm-hmm. invest in yourself, but you can't invest in yourself without a job, without yeah. some kind of income coming in. Gotta so you got to do something. But it's always great when you could do something that kind of relates to what, what you're you doing anyway. Do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the fact that he's a, a journalist, mm-hmm. he's writing about music and shit like that, festivals for a magazine, that's kind of a nice little, you know, pocket to be in. Yeah. Um, he had a big turning point a few years ago, about five years ago, when he decided to become sober. Um, he had, you know, he talks about, he's open about his issues with alcoholism and, you know, drug use and stuff like that and addiction. And, you know, ever since then, becoming sober, he started, you know, making music and found a, a take in the hip hop and, or, you know, at least hip hop influenced music. And, you know, he started doing his thing. Um, and then he put out, I, I first came across him on Instagram. I think I just saw him pop up somehow. And he had a project that had, was coming out around that time that I saw him called Growing Up Gay. Right. And I was like, all right, let me check this. I got to check this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like he's spitting. Let me see what he's talking about. And he had a joint on there that was crazy. That was just like, I heard this shit and I was like, all right, this is like one of the illest shits I heard in a minute. I wasn't, you know, the project was cool, but it was like that one joint. I was like, all right, I want to I wanna hear more from this dude. He seemed like he dope. Um, but yeah, that was that. And now he recently put out this project. Um... Conde Digital, mm-hmm. the EP. Uh, the end of January, January 31st. Five songs, six minutes. So short but sweet. I love a little nickel bag. I like that. That's a nice little... It's a nice little like that's, I size. feel like that's right there. Like for the full length, I, I like, like my, my 10, 12. And mm-hmm. then give me an EP for like five or six. Like that's a nice little, you know what I'm saying? And then give me a double LP, 20 yeah, tracks Yeah, go in. More. Mix it up a little yeah. bit. Keep me on my toes. You know what I'm saying? But he hit you with the nickel bag. <laughs> five songs. 16 minutes, 49 seconds. Um... This is his, I think his second full length. Like I said, he put out the Growing Up Gay, and I think that was like his first. That's his debut album. Yeah, that man. was like his, his introduction. His to second EP, because he said he put out an EP. Late last year or something like that? Uh, No. Last summer? It was, it was a few years ago before that. Before the Condi. Before uh, the Condi Digital. He has another EP. Oh, before EP. the album. Yeah. Okay. So um, I didn't get the name of the EP. Okay. But, you know, this is his second EP. Okay. Um. So... What's going on here with the ratings? What's happening? For this project, I'm going to have to give it a mid. Okay. Yeah. I gave it a mid, like a 40% mid. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't overwhelmed with it. Wasn't underwhelmed. hmm But it ain't, really, it ain't really take me there. All right, so let's get into it. The production on this joint is very, is very eclectic. Very different, avant-garde, to say the uh, least. I was waiting for you to say to that. Say the least. I was waiting you know what I'm for saying? you like, to I say that. You know i saying? I can describe that. it. It's very sharp. It's very rigid. It's very electric. Um, it gives me like punk and grunge, especially like 90s, mid-90s era, like think like Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins type, like those type of horns and guitars and strings and shit. But then with hip hop drums, like that's the hip hop aspect to the shit. He brings it back with the break beats and the the drum patterns. But his his lyrical performance and delivery is very intricate. Very he gives me like you could tell he if not studied definitely was influenced by Eminem. Like he has those structures. He gives you those quadruple time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Flows and he's flipping and he's playing with tempos and he's playing with. You know, the beats he's dropping on and all of that shit. He's doing all of that shit. That being said, that's a lot going on on top of a lot of noisy soundscape. And it makes it hard to digest for me. I fucks with him lyrically. Like, he, his content and the shit he says is crazy. Like, he, he said, what did he say? Um, so, my favorite joint, my favorite joint off the album is, is Money. That's my shit. I fuck with that song. That joint come on, the beat is hard. It sound like some it sound like some MF Doom type shit. Like the beat, the beat is giving me those type of feels. And I'm like, okay, I see where we going. I see where we going. Um and it the beat, the beat sounds like it sounds like electricity. It sounds like somebody broke a tower at a, a electrical plant or like a fucking like one of those uh Generators or some shit like that, Buzzy. and the shit just like it's what it giving me that feel. Mm. But then he giving you the drums, and he kind of spitting on that shit. The flow, he like eating that shit. He like 
He fucking it up. He giving you the bars, but the beat is noise. It's kind of like on some Cypress Hill type shit. Like he giving me all of those different feels, and I'm like, ooh. And You're this is throwing, the opening joint. You are throwing all the right references. That's what I'm saying. You know, all I'm out of here, the man. Right Come ones. on, man. Like, God, I does this, B. This. But look, but this, but so he's going in. He's going off. The beat is hit, and then it's called money. So he's talking about his troubles and his issues with money. Mm-hmm. How money is making him feel. How having lavish and luxurious taste and not necessarily having the account to accommodate that taste, mm-hmm. it puts you in a bit of a situation. And that's just a deep concept right there to kind of think about. But then you don't think about all of that shit over this soundscape. So it's just, he's juxtaposing a lot of different shit, which is dope. I fuck with it. And this is open in the project. So I'm like, oh, this is like, this is nasty right here. And then he says, he says, the second verse, he starts going off. He says, I got holes in my pocket and they be burning. Like every dollar that I spent, I spent before I earned it. Woo-hoo-hoo! I'm like, yo, he kind of, it's introspective, but it's like intricate bars. Like he mixing the skill with the emo emotional shit, which I'm like, that's that, that shit is dope. But yeah. after that, the project kind of fell off of me. Like, I ain't really... Like, the other joints, they were still, like, in that same sound, but they weren't as... They weren't as funky. Like, it ain't giving me that... Like, they were a little too abstract for me to, like, really digest and appreciate. And mm-hmm. I could appreciate some of them. Like, he went in on... I forget what song it was. Um, I think it was Fire. And he did the the Laya Laya, Pants on Fire. Mm-hmm. And I, I like that shit. That shit was hard, too. Like, that was my second favorite. And then he did, like, a quadruple time that was like out of this world but I couldn't understand one word like how we were talking about in the last episode how right. un- when M Eminem do it you can hear the enunciation the syllables the breakdown he did it and it just sounded like yeah, yeah. like it sounded like a dying chicken like I ain't <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> there and I was like ah and then so the rest of the production it's in that same that sharp that rigid that punk that electro but that's a tricky situation to play with because if you do it wrong it's just gonna sound like a bunch of noise and it's gonna be hard to listen to yeah. and it's gonna be hard to get past that and yeah. even hear what you're saying lyrically if you do it right you get what i think is money which was mm-hmm. i fuck with that i think that was the sweet spot but i felt like the rest of the album kind of fell short on that aspect i didn't really you know what i mean get too much from the other joint and you only got five songs on there so i'm like i like i really love one but the rest of the joints was like eh, like i ain't really i had to kind of try to get past the the sound of it. It was that's, like, it wasn't an appeasing sound. It was hard on the ears. You that's know what I'm the saying? downfall of a short album. If if it doesn't come together like more than one or two songs, yeah. it's, it's not. Yeah. It's but not I mean, I, I, I appreciate him going there. Like, And actually, he don't open with money. He opened with a year of the queer. It's the, it's the year of the queer. 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 That's on his rock grunge. That's that punk shit. <laughs> he going, he's going off, man. Hey, he wearing this shit on his sleeve. If he wearing sleeves, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And I fucks with it. But all right. for this project, I gave it a mid forty percent. What did you What did you think? Right. What's your take? Fun fact. Oh, I knew he. I knew he had a fun fact. <laughs> I knew he had a fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. So Chris Conde was a, officially dubbed Condi Digital. <sighs> By Bobby Digital himself, RZA. That's crazy. That's that's a pretty big fucking deal. That, I mean, I would put out a fucking EP right away too. If I was done you know by saying? RZA, you know if I met saying? RZA like, and he actually spoke not? to me, why the fuck? I think not? he opened for him at a show, uh, maybe in San, in San he, Antonio. He works that that L.A. He works Texas. That, yeah. Houston. He he's in all of that. He he's out in, there. He's in a lot of different networks, but. That was how he caught up with, I think he opened for him. And then okay. he went backstage and spit some bars, spit for, some him. bars for him. And here comes Bobby uh, Bobby Digital Conde with the Christenal. Christenal. Christenal, like, hit, look. Christenin. That's pretty dope, man. Conde and those, that's one of the, like, that's Wu-Tang Clan. Like, that's, one of the OG, one of the staples of hip-hop. That get, that tells you a lot about who he is and as far as, like, what he the um, fact that he can appreciate that and knows what that means, and what and 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 what hip hop means to him is like how he takes it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? He cares about the skill, the craft, 
the people who made it great. Mm-hmm. You know, he's that type of artist. So that's where he's coming from with his lyricism, and I hear it and I get it. He gives me more LP from Run the Jewels. Oh shit! Than what a Eminem. reference! What a reference! So um, what a reference! That's okay. That's kind of what I get. Okay. And, and LP himself, LP, he's nasty. not. He's dope, but he's not necessarily the most polished. Polished no, delivery no, wise. No. But you know, he you know, that's just But that's he loves why it, that's why I put him on the, the Eminem, because his technicality yeah, is like Eminem is but sharp just, like a Ginsu knife. But he just he has the flow and the ambition to get it. He yeah. just gotta He just gotta like clean it up, it up just yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Let's see. Another fun fact. Oh, you got multiple fun facts? I do have multiple fun okay, facts. There's like a lot that. of things I that like are fun that. about this artist. I'm, you picked this Shout artist. Shout out to Kanye. And there's digital, a lot of fun man. things about Kanye him. Kanye motherfucking digital. He headlined for um, Giant Fest last summer. Mm. He was headlining yes. for Will, Will Sherry. We're talking about Will Sherry. I Sheridan's remember that. For inaugural Giant Fest that he threw uh, at Three Dollar Bill, which is in Bushwick. That was dope. Uh, in Brooklyn, and he had a lot of fucking queer artists. Shout out to Will Sherry. A lot, and he always represents. You already know. Yeah. Like, in fact, the spirit that Conde Digital has as a performer absolutely gives Will Sheridan. Yeah. Well, which, it's only right. It makes Sheridan. sense. He definitely <laughs> shouts. Up. He fucks with him like yeah. heavy. Like so, he wouldn't. I mean, he wouldn't have had him at his concert, if right? He didn't, but. I didn't even know that. I love that. to see that. That yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he is that embracing unity. that somebody is influenced by you, and, and that's just dope. They just go, and they just go in, and they don't give a fuck. They just really are free I in themselves, that. and it's a beautiful thing. Love that. That said... Uh-oh. I also gave it a mid. Okay. And a lot of the things you said, you're literally saying word for word. That's pretty crazy, man. <laughs> what uh, I this gave is it a, twice. I gave it a fifty. That's crazy. <laughs> I gave it like a 50 we right about mid. around the same. His sound is very. Um, there's a lot of tension. Ooh, there's great a lot word. of tension. That's a in great his music. adjective. But you know what's crazy is before I listened, before I was able to get into his bio, that's what I heard, and it was turning me off. Like, I couldn't understand yeah. why, like, there's all this noise going on. But when I read about his story and found out where he came from... I was or, so interesting to hear your take. It made me be like, oh, this makes total you fucking see? sense. But you see how music works, though? Yeah. And you see how important these bios are? Like, it music gives, is crazy. It's a... It's... It's, it's universal. A thing. It's a part of these artists, though, yeah. but it's only a part. And people are gonna gravitate towards it more once they get a little piece of you. Once yep. they feel like they found something in you that they can resonate, they can with, resonate with. That's it. just gonna make your music just sound that much better exactly. to them. And sometimes you can't get it because you don't have the right perspective. Yeah. Like you don't have yeah. a, a, a a reference base to kind of be like, okay, what to is get, this? What's going mm. on? All you doing is hearing it's shit. Hearing You're just shit. hearing noise at first. Mm. But once you get through the noise, it's like, oh, oh, shit. You start hearing other shit, and it's like, oh. Absolutely. That's dope. That's crazy. That said, like, the the quality of the production, um, the guy that produced the beat is the is K-Death. That's the guy, um, the guest rapper that was on the first song. He did the tracks, all okay. the tracks oh, on, the, shit. Okay. on the album. And I think they worked with each other, like, a lot before. Mm. Um, K what? Death is part of a group. K Death, yeah. K Death is part of a group. Uh, I forgot the name of the group. Um, I did not write it down. There's a group that he's from that, but they they fuck with each other a lot, and they worked with each other before. I think on the album "Growing Up Gay," okay, which is his which is his debut album. Um, my favorite track on it is "Earth," just because it's the least. It's the least noisy. The least noisy. <laughs> and it's the and it's the most groovy <laughs> of good, all of the tracks. And you know, K, uh Yeah the Queer and Money. Mm. Or excuse me, Yeah the Queer and Fire were tracks that once I got the once I got his reference point about like who he is. Yeah. That's when I was like, that's when those songs really like settled in for me. His and content I got into it. is very heavy. It's very it's heavy. heavy and, and the music proves it. The music kind of yeah, accentuates it, all yeah. of that. But it is a lot. It's a lot. So if you're not ready to hear that noisy screamo rock shit that he did yeah. on the Condi Digital song, the title track, yeah, yeah, then you're not gonna really understand this vibe. But he definitely comes from like a punk. Noise like com- that's definitely like punk beast. rock. It's like it's like punk rock grunge, crunch, 
with a hip hop twist. With a hip hop you know twist. And he's rapping over but it. But he's spitting. He's spitting. He's spitting. Spitting, spitting for real. Spitting. Shame is the name of the noose around my neck. Mm. On money. I'm Yo. Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get the shame. I totally get it. And I just, like, I, I don't know. I just really, really connect with stories. And it just makes, it just paints a totally beautiful picture for me. Like, yeah. just seeing, just seeing where it is. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the, the, the refrain on fire, liar, liar, pants on fire, pour the liar fluid higher, let this masquerade retire. Hard. That's just, like... That's his Eminem yeah. coming out, but it's also his like Nas. Yeah, like he's you could hear his influences. You could hear all it wrapped and, and up. he wears he wears it on his sleeve. It's a juxtaposition. So and I like it. you know, I those that was those are my highlights from the album. It's basically Earth, and I like I like Fire more than mm. I like. Um, but again, like I said, in the context of just who he is as a person, totally makes sense, and. You know, I give him his props just for being, just for existing and being as open and empathetic and uh, vulnerable, vulnerable <laughs> as he is. <laughs> the Herbal Tea Podcast, Herbal ladies and Tea gentlemen. Podcast. So, there it Shout is. out to Chris Conde, Chris man. Chris Conde, Condi Digital EP. Project Rock that shit. Project is definitely worth checking out, it man. Is. Please go listen to it. Streaming on all platforms. Conde Digital. The man was christened by none mm -hmm. other than the motherfucking RZA from the Wu Tang Clan. I mean, go listen to the shit. What, what, what are you gonna say after that? And that's the whole fact. What are you gonna say after that? But me and PZ both gave it a mid, so we agreed on this one too. We kind of on the street. We on the street. We on a bit of a street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, again, shout out to Conde Digital and all of the Q Plus artists out there. Continue to send us your music. We definitely checking for it, and you know we gonna review it and let y'all know what we think. Let's go. Who do we got next? Who's Who? going on? We gonna keep it rolling We're out gonna here. Keep we gonna rolling. keep it rolling. Our next rolling. artist. Get What's that going album on? Cover. Who do we got? Who do we got? That'd be Darcy Dundada. Oh, shit. Okay. And he has a single called Snowfall. Snowfall. Have you ever seen that show, Snowfall? No. On FX? It's a pretty not. fucking good show. Sidebar, but go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. All right. Snowfall. Um. Well, let's get into his bio. Um. He's originally from Columbus, Georgia. Okay. You know, you found that I did find. How'd that. you get that piece of info? Interesting, because <laughs> I couldn't find anything. So I wonder how you got that. Piece he actually of does have a bio out there. Oh, he does. He does. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> All right. Okay, he been he been living in New York for a minute. Um, I did get to meet him at Royalty and Bars. Oh, did you? <laughs> Oh shit! This one, for, That's you ain't gonna act like you're not gonna. <laughs> you ain't gonna since you want to ignore motherfuckers, you don't want to get to know these artists. You don't want to know who the fuck Who's they are. Who was I ignoring? Are just you saying, kidding me? Like I totally saw you just. We was right busting past, it up before gonna, you. Was. We're, gonna, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that when indie streets get here. We're gonna Man, discuss cut it, that cut more. It out. But royalty and bars. I, you know, I met up with him. He was he was one of the performers there, and I got to hear a little bit of uh, his story a little bit. I asked okay. him. So you've been in New York for a minute. Okay, like maybe over ten years. 25 years old. He Young just, Like I said, just killed it in, in February. You know what I'm saying? February 9th. Fun fact, his album cover or his single cover was done by Mojo Disco, who's a black trans woman. Shot and produced the artwork for the single cover. They that you killed see this here. shit. I love yeah. this fucking yeah, artwork. Yeah, like, I, I, um... I know Mojo Disco from like back in the day. He's been in New York doing events, and I went to one of his events, and you know I, I performed at one of his events. It was okay. it was good. He's like a really really cool dude. You know what I'm saying? That's like, what's up. Or now he's a woman, so um, so I just want to give shout out to Mojo Disco for that's what's doing, up. That's dope. And, they they body this doing shit. Your thing. I love this fucking cover. Doing your thing. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Here uh -oh, we go. Uh -oh. What's going on? How you feeling? So like, this what's song. Up? What's up? This song. I gave it a moon rock. Ninety five percent, my nig. I gave it a moon rock. This song is near perfect to me 
as the type of song that we want to hear from artists who want to do twerk rap. So as a song, <sighs> this song is fine. This song is it. This song is what you want to sound like, is what I feel like. You got bars. You kept it brief. You know what I'm saying? It's a twerk-ass song, but you also talking about some real live shit because you just talking about basically being on the scene as I am. Like, I relate to it a lot because I see these parties. I'm in these parties a lot. And I know what Snowfall is. Snowfall is a cocaine reference. So that's what people do, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he got the he got the blood. It's pr- like it's he, pretty much the nose run is right there. Yeah, like, which is why, which is such a nice little subtle touch. Yeah, because if you don't pay attention, you might not see it when you first look at it. I mean, but then when you look, you look I at the mean, nose and you like, oh <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. that's what's going on. That's the type of party we at. Listen, and I know those parties very very fucking well. But he describes it very. Uh, lyrically in this song. Like, I just kind of love his flow. I like how he changes the flow in the middle of his oh second verse. God. Like, he goes I'm in, still, you blowing my eyes. I'm makes me want to listen to this old shit. I want to go and listen to his album now, because he has an album out, Dundada, that came out just shortly before this, you know, this single. It doesn't overstay its welcome, well produced. Ooh, like, I don't... well said. I don't see why this song is... Would not get a snow, a, 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 a moon rock because it's kind of what we asking for when you do a twerk song to yeah. sound like this. But don't everybody go jock and style and sound like this. <laughs> don't do that. Just take the notes of what makes this song good. Holy shit! I can't believe we just got a motherfucking moon rock from IKP. Boom. And I remember distinctively. When I gave my moon rock, Do you? you were like adamant about like, you know what? Because I ain't just giving out. I, I ain't giving out my shit easy. I was like, oh, so you think I'm just giving them out easy, mm. huh? But you see, when you moved by a joint, <laughs> yeah. you just got to give it up, man. You got to give it up. Wow, a moon rock. This is a That's moon rock. Feeling, huh? Brat, da, da, da. Hey, shout out to Darcy motherfucking Dundada. Shout out to Darcy Dundada. He's a real, real cool dude. He's under the tutelage of Bugs Gutter. Like, you know, he works with Pink Elephant. And Pink Gorilla. I just want to... Pink Gorilla. <laughs> Shout, Shout out, out to Pink, to Pink Elephant. Elephant. <laughs> Pink Gorilla is Bugs Gutter. Pink Elephant Japan, is the festival what in, Jer- in Texas. Yeah. We all fucked up in here. My bad, but... Shout out to all of them, but it's, he's, it's he's definitely love. under Pink Gorilla. Yeah, shout out. Shout out. But with that said, what you got? I can't believe this nigga gave me a moon rock. Right. That's what's up, man. I'm proud of you. <laughs> For real. Like, you gave it up, man. I like that. That's what's up. I gave it a fire. And you kind of got me like second guessing. Like, cause I was I was teetering moon rock to keep mm-hmm. it a buck. I'm not gonna lie to you. I gave it an 85% fire. Mm-hmm. And this is probably this is my second highest rating for any project, any single we've been yeah, doing. I gave Moon yeah. Rock, and this is eighty five percent fire. This song is completely like you described it. It's a perfect song. It's it's first of all the beat is hard as fuck. Yeah, like yeah. I want to listen to the beat all day. I want to throw yeah. a sixteen on this. Shit. I want to remix. It makes me want to do everything. Yo, Darcy, it makes can me want to get do on everything. the fucking remix. So first of all, all right. I love the artwork. You killed it with the artwork. So you already set it up. So I already want to hear this shit. Mm. Snowfall, it's like, all right, boom, what he going to be talking about? We already know Snowfall reference. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom, you got the show I was just talking about. Boom, where he going with it? B come on and it's hard and it's like, ooh, okay. Open up. Shit ain't sweet, no Ariana. This ain't sweet enough. What? Oh, that's how you feeling? Oh, that's how you going to come on and introduce yourself into the, the building real quick. Okay. Boom, lay, lay the table. I love it. Shit is crazy. His voice, I mean, you you can't, you can't, that's some shit you can't teach. You can't teach a voice. You, you can't, can't teach, teach somebody how to have a voice. And be his confident. voice, his patience with the flow is just effortless. He has a he has an effortless patience, which I kind of see that sometimes in other artists that don't have it. And I kind of right. I kind of try to be like, you know what, like, just calm down, take your time before. Yeah, but that's something yeah. you kind of either have or you don't. And yeah. it's like he kind of sits right in the, pocket, in the pocket. And when he changes the flows, it's not like... 
It's, it's like shot. changing lanes and like it's just smooth. It's like, smooth. You know how you could change the lane and some people be like, Ur, yeah, Ur. you know what I'm saying? Like hesitating, they scared, they nervous. Boom, he, he changed put, the lane and just put, put my signal, signal on, on and boom, we, we over here now. Yeah. Effortless, and then the tone he got like a raspiness, but then it's like a little twang to it. And then twang. talking about twang, <laughs> this dick come with a couple veins to it. I've been getting the gym, oh so it got a God. little twang to it. Damn. I don't know why that line hit me so hard because I'll be in the gym and I get exactly what he's talking about like that little extra, you know what I'm saying? Do you be in the that gym? Little, Come on, fam. Come on. Do you be in the gym, Come on, really? Fam. Come on, fam. Shoot, playing the fitness in the situation. Do I got to say I be in the gym? Playing the fitness in the situation. You, know, you see me out here. I'm out here in these streets, man. Mm. You in the streets, but I'm out here in the streets. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nah, but you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm athletic. Gotcha. I'm gotcha. active. I know what he's talking about. You work up a little sweat, you know what I'm saying? You, mm-hmm. it get a, you get a little twang to it, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I never heard somebody put that shit in a bar. <laughs> like, it was just like, oh, shit, I can't believe he just said that shit. And it just hit me a certain way, and it was hard. But he got a lot of little lines like that. He's lyrical, smooth with the flow. Mm-hmm. The beat is crazy. Executed the concept. Talking that shit. He has, like, the bridges and the breakdowns. I love the hook. I mean, the song is like near perfect. He got the right tone. I, I like his tone. I enjoy I hearing know, him man. rap. Like it is crazy. And, and listen, fun fact, he got a joint on the Darcy Dunda. I think it's on the Darcy Dunda called um, "Know the Vibes." That's another joint. You got to check that out. You got to go check out his other. I'm project, gonna check out the but "Know the Vibes." Album. Just I remember, really I told you that that shit is hard too. But he got his influences. So his influences was Nas, Jay Z, Kanye. Yeah. Tupac and Foxy, which I thought was an interesting, like, starting five. Like, that's an interesting mix. It makes sense. To make an artist. But Foxy's one of those precise flow. And she got the raps. She got bye the bye raps. Bye-bye, skinny lace stuff. Yeah. Woo! Come on, fam. Yo. You know what I'm saying? He, it's a yeah. blood clot gunshot. Shout out to Darcy, man. He gave it up on his joint. Well executed. He delivered. It's performed to the T. I mean... IKP gave it a moon rock. That's a big fucking deal. I don't know how. I don't know if y'all realize how big of a deal that is, but that's a big motherfucking deal. It is, man. Like moon rock and a fire, and I'm teetering. Like I wouldn't even be mad upgrading my shit to a a moon rock. Like because I really can't. You better. I really can't argue enough why not to give it a moon rock. I as opposed about, to as I, why I could argue why I I should give it a moon rock at least ten times. It's my favorite song that we've reviewed probably. Right. Just song by itself. Right. As a single. Like, the Cajunada was the favorite project. It was a project. Favorite song? I'm like, and I'm trying to, because I don't, you know, I'm not giving it up. Like Snowfall, man. But, and I also got a little bit of his perspective. Like, I guess, I guess you could say because I was able to speak to him in person and got a little bit of his influence. The influences that you named were the exact rappers that he named to me. Those are all really proficient rappers that you like to hear over and over because their flow is tight. Like, they, they got a message. They saying it right. They choosing the right cadence. He checks check all the boxes. He checks uh, so he many really. boxes of lyricists. Why would you not just... You know, shout a queen uh, a queen out when you see her. That's Celebrate it. a king when you see him. That's it, man. Hey, tens across the motherfucking boys. Shout out to Darcy <laughs> Dondada. Right. Snowfall. Go check that shit out. Get it that came shit out. out. It dropped January 25th, man. It's streaming everywhere. It did. Go listen to it. Please let us know what you think. Because we really want to know if we out here tripping. Like, are we tripping? Are we? Because Peasy just gave up a moon rock. I really did. We giving up back to back moon rocks out here. Like back I don't know. Like let back. us know what y'all think. Is this shit really that fire? Is the Q Plus community out here burning shit up like this? They need to be. Or are we tripping? Let us know. Hit us up in the comments. Shout out to Darcy. Hey, shout out to Darcy. We gonna keep it moving. Let's keep it speaking going. Speaking of motherfucking paint gorilla. Let's speaking of the you know what I'm saying. Devil speaking and speaking of they shall appear. Next up on the motherfucking list. Who that is? None other than the motherfucking homie. The homie. My man's, you know. Bugs motherfucking gutter. Boogs gutter. Oh, shit. <laughs> Shout out to Bugs gutter and the whole Pink Gorilla Shout Entertainment. Shout out to them. Um, so Bugs gutter is a gay rapper from VA, mm-hmm. Newport News. Yeah, uh, yeah. Based in New York right now. Right, right. Um, he dropped his debut project last year, actually, The Pink Gorilla Effect. That came out last, I think it was August. August. 
It was like a 16 track project. Um, we actually reviewed that for one of the drafts. For one of our of, drafts of the right Herbal there. Tea podcast, did. but it didn't make it to the, it it the, to the debut. Yeah. But um, it definitely helped us get our feet. Yep. Um, he was actually on the circle with me, season three. Shout out to Nunu, the circle NYC. On the circle. Um, that was fun. That was actually where I met him. Uh, and we be, you know, we ended up becoming good friends. Mm-hmm. We worked together a bunch of times. We actually did a joint with us and the Alliance. He was on, he was in the cake video. He was in the cake he was video, in the cake which video. I forgot about. That's we had a lot first, of people in that video. Yeah, there that was, was a lot of people. That was a he crazy was definitely him Shout out and, to the Alliance. Him and the whole man made. They was all there. Man made was in the building. It was, was popping. Was that was a that was an event. It we was, had a moment. So we, we shot a video. Yeah. Well, it was a video for my it was a video for the Alliance. The cake the cake a video from shoot. our EP. Introducing the Alliance. Introducing the July Alliance. July 2016. Put You're that ready. out. Um, You're ready. But yeah, we shot the video for that. So that's initially where we did we meet? I don't know. He was, was there. A, it was a lot of people there. I don't know if we officially met, but that was the first time we started I I met him. getting acquainted. You know, when he was on a circle, he's mm-hmm. another cast member on a circle. Um, so shout out to Bugs. Um, he has a history in the ballroom scene. Right, um, right. Like we said, he comes from Newport News, Virginia, and he also, you know, has a, a, a history tattered in you know jail time. He spent most of his teenage years in juvie. Um, and that shaped a lot of, you know, who he is as a man today. He right. kind of made it out of that and was able to turn his life around and, you know, made it up to New York City and, you know, been on a productive path ever since. So shout out to Bugs Gutter. Um, what's your, your take on Bugs? Are you, I mean, I know you know Bugs. Fun fact. Oh, I knew you had a fucking fun <laughs> fact. Fun fact. Um, as far as the single is concerned, Fuck a plate. Mm. He has a high quality promotional video on Twitter that catches him and his partner, Chad Bailey, who's a model, mm. a match it scarlet red Chad. Victoria's Secret lingerie. Oh, Just shit. Just like in the You mean like this right here? Like that. You mean similar to this right here? Actually, <laughs> it is exactly that picture come to yeah. life. So... There is like a, I think it's like a two minute clip, and they just basically having fun, it's just a visual. living their life, fooling around. I told him he might as well stop playing and make that the fucking video. Like that I, shit is an official. It's the OnlyFans. It's a, he, he got an OnlyFans account to do the video, and this is what I've been trying to tell you to do because that is I the need to win. Stop playing. Stop playing. I've been thinking with about the it. Freaky I'm not gonna Fridays. lie. I told you I've been stop in the gym. Playing. I told you I've been in the. gym. I know you're not doing it you for see, no I'm reason. You see, I'm getting it ready. You might. So wanna, I'm just. I'm just telling. Summer's you. around the corner. I'm just letting you know. Like I'm just letting you know that I'm working. Hurry up and get with the wave. I'm working. So there's that. <laughs> so that's my fun fact. Shout out to Buzz. Look at this motherfucking <laughs> cover though. They went the fuck. They went there. And I love it. They took it there. Hey, black love. All black the way. love. Look at the imprint though. Chad, my homie, but that ass looking crazy. God damn. That shit is looking fucking God plate, man. Fucking he damn. already set you up with the visual. Shout out to Buzz, man. And again, like I said, Buzz is doing a lot out here in the community. He's yes. been on a positive path ever since he made, you know, the transition to New York City. And he also put together a LGBTQ Q plus artist showcase, monthly showcase, mm-hmm. Royalty and Bars, that just Royalty and reignited Bars. last month. So shout out to that. And um, all the artists that were there, absolutely, including absolutely. Darcy Dundada, our last reviewed artist. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we're going to get to this new single he just put out. So like I said, he put out a full-length project last summer. Right. Um, but he just hit us, you know, with something to hold us over until his next offering. Exactly. He put this single out uh, January 31st. It's called Fuck a Plate. Fuck a Plate. So fuck, you know, we don't need, we don't need no setting. We don't need no silverware. No. We don't need no napkins. You don't none need of that. no just napkins. Fuck all that. Fuck a plate. No. Um, just sit it on the face. I oh. gave this joint a loud. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Okay. I gave it. A, I gave it a sixty-two percent loud. Oh, did you? Sixty-two percent okay. loud. Yeah. Okay. So it's definitely twerk rap. Like we said, we kind of. I don't know if we coined this phrase or whatever, but like we know. said, there's a it lot of shit out lot. there, and when you hear it, you know exactly what we talking right. about. This is twerk rap. Mm-hmm. The concept. Is there. Fuck a plate. We on our food shit, dinner shit. You know I got an affinity towards the food shit. Gourmet, like, come on. You already know what it is. You know, once you start talking about eating up shit and all that, like, 
You know, oh no, he definitely took it there. No, he took it there. He took it there. (laughs) When he's talking about fucking a plate, like he's talking about a whole nother meal. Whole different type of meal. He he getting it. So the beat, it got that, it got that, it got that draw to it. Like it's kind of like, it's a hard strip club beat, but it's darker just because of that. That element, like you feel like you in a strip club where all of the the hoodest niggas go. Yeah. Like this is the only yeah. everybody not coming up in this strip club. This, this is not the flashy one. You come in here to no. get nasty, raunchy, or you come in and get into some shit. This is if Langston's had poles. Yeah, and it's setting one of those poles. type of vibes, mm-hmm. like the dark, extra dark corners and all of that. So he already setting the soundscape with it, and then the hook is like. I find myself just in the shower, just singing that shit. Like, just what? Oh. Sit it, on it, sit it, on, on it. it. They just, sit it, on it's just it. fun to say. Like, what? Like, what you talk about? You sit sh- it, on you it. You in the shower with it? I mean, you know, you know how you sing in the shower. See, you trying to take it somewhere you, totally you, different. I'm just talking about soap? the catchiness of it, not dropping necessarily them. so much the content, but I see what you're trying to do, and it's cute. <laughs> But that's not it's just the I, question. Are you dropping the soap or not? Listen, man, I've dropped the soap before. I mean, I don't oh. do it on, oh. on occasions, but oh know, god, soap is slippery, it drops. Shit. You clutching pearls? If I had my pearls today, <laughs> see, look at look at what look at this. That fuck, it's Chad's ass, them cheeks got you all hot and bothered. God, but listen, damn. this is what it is, man. He out here, he's serving it up on a motherfucking plate, and mm-hmm. we here for it. I we, fucks with the shit, we here for it. And then he going in, he kept. He kept the lyrical content right in line with the 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 plate, the food. Fuck him, and you're going to feel like you done fucked the whole horse. Like, how you tell a nigga that? <laughs> I mean, he did kind of, like, let it all hang on the circle. Oh, yeah, no, we know what it is, but it's just still, like, goddamn. Like, then, uh, then again, you're going to feel like al- you fucked the whole On the horse. album cover, the member the fucking the oh, Pink yeah. Gorilla Effect album cover. Out here. Listen, you loud and proud, man. Listen. Ain't nothing to clean up. I gave that shit aloud. Oh, shit. As hey, well. Sit it on it. But hold on. Hold <laughs> up, hold up, shit. hold up. On it. Sit 61%. It. Fam, this might be the closest we've ever come. Like, this is my, this might be the closest we've ever Probably. come. Probably. Like, percentage-wise? Yeah. 61, 62, that's yeah. crazy. And those are, like, yeah. weird numbers. Like, right. where the fuck? I don't even know where I get that shit from. I mean, but that tells you like it's a okay, okay. Shout out to the homie Bugs, man. Shout Came out to through Bugs. again. He delivered. Fuck a plate. The imagery mixed with everything, the aesthetics, everything that comes behind it. Look, and if I give it to you, promise you'll be rough. Blindfold and poppers. I can be a dirty slut. Listen, he's no stranger. He's no stranger to the sexuality thing. He's been free and open about his sexuality and, you know, showing your body is, for him, part of that. Fam, I'm a sucker for a blindfold and some poppers. Just saying. Like, for somebody to throw that in there, like, that's a very specific and vivid scene. Like, everybody don't know about that. Everybody don't know what's going on with all that right there. (laughs) So for those that get that reference, it's like, oh, Okay, that's how we feeling. Like that's how we playing tonight. Oh, I'm not in these streets like that. Um, <laughs> Come on, let's stop playing. Disclaimer, not stop in these playing. streets like that. Man, stop playing. But the cool, the, <laughs> the other thing about it is the confidence. Like that's one of the keys yeah. to the sexiness. Is you yeah. have to be really, really confident about all of it. Yeah, they're both in like red lingerie. Like I did. Like it just reminds me of kind of like what I was doing last year. I was. In Pride, not in Pride, but um, well, I mean, I was in the Pride Parade, but I was kind of like just, I like to wear the shit too. Like, yeah. I like to wear lace. Embracing your shit, man. Embracing my whole do. shit. Yeah. Like, and I was kind of really just trying it out just to see how I felt in it, and I felt totally comfortable in it. So yeah. there's just a whole, there's a whole body positivity, confidence, self-help aspect to it that I see in what he's presenting, and this is just right in line with it. I mean, you know, what, what you more find can we just, say, You man. find your sex appeal however yeah. you Yeah, I mean, and, and that's like hard, it. too. Like you said, it's the confidence. Like, it's it's not easy to kind of be just Enough. that out there and that free yeah. with it. You know what I'm saying? It takes a certain amount of confidence yeah. in yourself to just be like, fuck it. I don't yeah. care what nobody thinks. I'm going to 
play on both sides of the fence. For I'm sure. gonna play with the roles. I'm gonna fuck with the genders. Yeah. I'm gonna fuck with your perception. The all of that shit. And, and all fuck of that. what you think. Mm-hmm. This is what I do. This is what I like. Eat it. Said it on, on it. it. Said, said it. it. On, on it, it. <laughs> on the fucking. All right, Buzz. Shout out to Buzz, Shout out man, to Buzz. and salute to the whole Pain Gorilla Entertainment. Chad, y'all doing big things, man. Word up. Um, but like we said, we both gave that shit aloud. A sixty-one and a sixty-two percent. That's eerie. It is. It's crazy to come that close. Like, like, and like we said, we don't, we don't consult with each other don't. before these episodes. In so. fact, I'm trying to get him to shut up about it oh, so we shit. don't get into the conversation. Oh, shit. I'll be wilding. I'll be trying to say too much. <laughs> I'll be I'm excited. Like, <laughs> I'll be hyped. So do I. What you want me to do? So do I. Like, nah, I'm not. I'm just saying. But that's But hey, that's let us is. know what y'all think. Salute the buzz. Go check that shit out. Fuck a plate, streaming on all platforms right now. Support Go stream the brother. that shit, listen to it, download it, buy it, and let us know what you think. Hit us up in the comments. Let's go. And let us know. Um, who we got, man? Is that it for the I think, I think that's, that's it for the that's Q+ it for the Q+ Q+ plus Shout artists. out again to the Q+ plus community, man. Y'all out here tearing Y'all shit out here up. Doing We've been giving shit. some You got moon rocks, we got louds, <laughs> we got, we got fires. Like what the fuck is going Continue on? Continue doing that shit, This y'all. is the shit we like we not like we said we not out here look we not looking for dirts and no. reggies. No. That's not what we're looking is... for. You know what I'm saying? I'm expecting to get mostly mids, mm-hmm. but then when we get fires, louds, and moon rocks? It's definitely well yo, deserved. Yo, I'm hype. I love this shit. shit. The Q Plus community, the artist community is thriving. It and is. we want y'all to keep it up. Keep making that shit. We're going to keep reviewing it and praising y'all and letting y'all know and giving y'all flowers. We're going to give y'all, y'all flowers stuff. right now because it need to be. Nobody else giving us flowers. Instead, we got stupid ass motherfuckers yeah. like Pastor Troy going off. Fuck them niggas. Anyway. Fuck them niggas. We got to. Speaking of flowers, we're going to give out some more to an ally. To an ally. Our ally of the day. Our ally. Who's the lucky the, ally of the day? Our ally of the day. The allies are so lucky, man. Y'all lucky <laughs> y'all. Let, we are allowing y'all to share this motherfucking platform. Yeah. Like we said, we built this platform for, for Q Plus artists, but we appreciate y'all's support. But y'all are lucky that we giving y'all this spot and we giving y'all this limelight. Mm-hmm. So who we got? Who's the lucky contestant? The lucky contestant. <laughs> It's Taylor Swift. Oh, shit. This what bitch. up, Swifties? This bitch. This hoe. I know, right? <laughs> this bitch. I know. I know. This What's up, hoe. Taylor? When is she not getting flowers nah, for I fuck anything? With like, I fuck with Taylor. She is a singer-songwriter from out of Reading, Pennsylvania, known for her narrative songs okay, about PA. her personal life, right? Latest album, Lover. Mm. Includes the singles Me and You Need to Calm Down Became her sixth number one album To sell over 500,000 u- copies in one week Damn All 18 of the songs have charted On the Hot 100 simultaneously whole album charted The whole That's thing That's not crazy A 18 track the album The whole thing Streaming farms You know what I'm saying Right Of course Most She has the <laughs> record for most simultaneous charting songs By female artists she got a lot of records, man. She has a lot I of saw records. that shit. She got a lot of like youth records, like mm-hmm. being the youngest artist to hit this and being the she youngest does. artist to da, da, and yeah, she. I, I mean, she got signed when she was fourteen. So yeah, you yeah. sound like you hate. It's More like an undertone. No, 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 it's like no, no, a no, no, no. Oh, no, no, okay. No, no, I, all right, let me. No, no, no. I thought I. I thought we're I gonna cle- we're gonna clear. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna elaborate on that right now. Hold on. She's an ally because look no further than the LGBT th- themed video. LGBT themed video. See, Q, that's for, why Q Plus know, comes Q in. Plus. Q Plus. That shit was Q, Q Plus. Q Plus themed, themed videos <laughs> <laughs> for me and you need to calm down, you which need features to calm down. openly bisexual Brandon Yuri from Panic at the Disco. Okay. And you need to calm down, which packed the whole. Uh, it's packed with the biggest Q plus stars and allies released during Pride Month and filled with pro LGBT themes. So that's why she's a Q plus artist. Okay, shout out um, to Taylor Swift, man. And she obviously, of course, recently has you know been more openly political, o- open about her political beliefs, and this song kind of goes there with it. That's what this song is basically about. This song is in promotion for her recently released documentary, Miss Americana. The single came out on January 31st, 2020. Mm. And I saw this documentary. This documentary basically, uh, it's it's a very good documentary. It Mm. It explains her songwriting process, and it goes pretty much from the Reputation era to the current era Mm -hmm. right now. Like, she had 
the album Reputation, and they showed a little bit of the writing process about it. And it also showed Lover. And, of course, in that in that um, time frame, this is when she becomes a little bit more political. She uh, first comes out in support of, uh, I think it was a Senate candidate for her home state, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. She was trying to go for the Democratic candidate, but instead the Republican candidate won. Okay. It's a woman, and it's a woman, she says, in the... In a documentary, she's basically Donald Trump in a wig <laughs> because she's basically anti everything. She's anti LGBT. She's anti woman rights. Yeah, and you know, and and and, and all of that. Stuck in ways. Just antiquated. Basically, so the documentary itself basically follows all of that, and it's really, really kind of compelling to kind of get a little full. It's a, full picture because that's what this song is supposed to be for. You know, you have songs that you might have done for an album. It was recorded while she was doing her Lover album, but she po- she held it. It's not on that yeah. album for this. Some songs she like, you know, you feel like you might, they might be a bigger platform that you could put yeah, on it than it just the album else. itself. Yeah. Give it something a little bit more life because otherwise it would have been just another song on the album that yep. would have been overlooked. Yep. And that's what this song is really all about she's kind of it kind of ties together everything you've seen about taylor swift and the news she goes in a lot about uh kanye west and the whole debacle since 2009 she goes in and how that affected her i gotta watch it i didn't it kind of paints a different picture of who she is and how the public perceives her that was and the behind kanye was wild for that (laughs) ah yeah he was right, but you he know, was right, but it but wasn't not, her it fault. It wasn't done the right. When, it wasn't her he fault. Like yeah. she don't decide who win the fucking yeah, award. Like was, I won the war, still get my shit. Like, like we we get it. It's it was a. I mean, it was an epic moment. It was like, a Kanye, compl- and uh, it's a complicated. thing. It was classic Kanye. Like you can't. And it kind of set. It's like the whole her whole thing with Kanye kind of underlines yeah. some of the things that she kind of went through privately, which is what you get to see in the documentary as well. Like. You know, contrary to popular belief, these stars actually have emotions and feelings, and they are not robots, and they're not always. Isn't calculated. it crazy that we believe that though? Like that they yeah don't not, have emotions that they rope. They just the, gotta be perfect all the time. We're so extra critical. Yeah. It's like they make any slip up. We looking at we waiting for them to slip up exactly. and make mistakes. Like why do we get like that? And because she's been signed so early, and she's always been praised you for her what? work. She grew up being a person that always like needed approval. Got signed at fourteen, and you and and. She she said in the in 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 the documentary, like there's this conception or this thing that stars when they blow up, they stay that age throughout their career. That makes a whole lot of fucking sense. Cause mm-hmm. think about, especially at the level she's at, the kind of treatment you get as mm-hmm. a pop star. Yeah. And she started in country, but she always had to pop a pill. Yeah. So she's like one foot in pop, one foot in country. You just in that bubble. That's what they say about Eminem. That's what they say about Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like, and people, and then if you stuck in your bubble and that's all you live in, you don't try to make the effort to get outside of that. Cause like I feel like Prince was kind of in that same bubble, but he made efforts to try to to just pull up and pop out and yeah. still be connected to like certain, you know what I'm saying? I feel like sometimes art and it's easy to get caught up in that. Yeah. Especially when you start at such a young age, like that's a ride and a half to just be like, all of a sudden you like 20 years old and you like, wait a minute. Like I haven't really, really like I been able really, to like, you don't to connect with, with, yeah. with this is her reckoning with all of that. But it's kind of like, you have to do that. You got to do you it at some point. When you that big, you have to have that. You have to have a certain kind of bubble around you. Like you can't, Yeah, you, you got to protect your you, energy your, at the very least. Your like, you know brand, what I'm your brand. So you're going to have managers and you're going to have lawyers all around you telling you, you know, how you got to move or at least giving you their opinion on what you need to be doing next. And you could tell, like, to a certain point, she had, she did exactly what she thought she needed to do to be the person that she needed to be. And this point here, like, during Reputation, you saw in the, you see in the documentary her basically arguing with her team for the freedom to be able to openly say, I back this candidate. Damn. She had to fight for that Imagine as a that, grown though. woman. Imagine that. You created such a brand 
that, that now your shit is so big, it's bigger than you. That it's forcing you. Like you're not even like the chair yeah. or the head of your own shit. You just like a player and you, you gotta go player. through the council. And you gotta go through the council. <laughs> but she they all were against it and she did it anyway. And that was kind of her breaking Sometimes out you gotta point. Be like, look, this it's you still know, me. I'm nigga. bossing like, up. It's me. And I said from there, well, girl, this Shout out to you. We're going to get back to this song. From that point on, if this is the path that you're going to take, you have to keep doing it. And yeah, that Senator lost that you wanted, that you wanted, but that's exactly why you have to keep going. Because sometimes in these fights, when you're in it, you're going to take some L's. You're going to you're gonna take some W's. So if you take an L, that don't mean sit the fuck down again. It just mean go at it yeah. harder. She don't seem like she got the quitter spirit, though. I think she's you know totally, like, yeah. like... she kind of she's, totally, she's kind of faced backlash and pushed yeah, back her whole career. Yeah. So it ain't even really... So she good. But what's up with this song, though? This song, I gave it a mid. It's a 59%. <laughs> all that said. Real quick, all that out the way. All that you know out what the way. Because I get... It's about the music and what it is. I and, just gave you the whole context of what I think But see, that's the beauty the about the show and that's the thing. Like, these artists are interesting artists. Like, yeah. we really not trying to even have artists on the show that aren't interesting and don't have some kind don't of have fruitfulness kind of story. to their story or other shit going on. Like, we like artists that have a lot because that's kind of what you need to have to take it to the next level nowadays. You can't just be an artist. You can't just be doing music. Like, what do you have going what on? Do what have... do you believe in? What do you support? What do you not fuck with? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What are you willing to fight for? What are you passionate about? And these People the... want to know this type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And when you find it out, it just brings you that closer to the artist. And with Taylor Swift, she has a lot going on. We've seen her grow up pretty much. On the screen, in her Pretty music, much. through yep. her songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing about these young artists that come into the game and they stay around for a while. Because a lot mm. of artists come in that young and don't stay around. And they don't stay around. She's been around for a little she minute. She's been around. Like, at this she point, I don't think she's going nowhere. Half like, her life. Yeah, she's like, been she's a staple now. And, 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 and we've been in the culture. And we've been a witness to that whole ride. So it's like, okay, that's pretty dope. So, so. But I felt the same way you did about the song. I kind of gave it a mid. I gave it the same thing. Mid 45. 45? Yeah, you gave it a 59. It's, I gave it a 45. It's basically, it, it's a bop because in the in Americana, back to the fucking documentary again, you get to see the production process. When you hear the, just the drums, it's a fucking rap song. Fam, that's the thing about, it's drums are the song. key. Drums will take a song <laughs> that's not a hip hop or rap song. And make it make a it, rap song. I make it basically. That's what I was a saying about the Kanye digital joint. Like yeah. that's a grunge rock pop album. You just but you throw the drums and you, you could spit. You take everything out. They give you the landscape to drop some song. bars. And if you rapping, rapping, then yeah, all right, that's a rap album. That's it. But yeah. this shit, it's inspirational. I said, you know, it's definitely a reference to gun violence in schools yeah. and. Um, kind of trying to encourage young people that they have the power to change the way things are. It's a well-intentioned song, but you know, given that it's a rap, be, given that of the type of pop song it is and the kind of foundation it is, I feel like this is no different than any protest song that we've done in hip hop. We've yeah. been doing this since uh, "Stop the Violence" in yeah, the '80s. Course. We've and been doing this since. That's then. the interesting thing about these songs. It's like. It's cool. We get it. We're going to give you the kudos. Yeah. They're needed. They're great. We, we need love it. Generations the, need The it. movement that she's tying it to is great. The meaning behind it, all of that is dope. But we talking about just the sound and the music mm -hmm. aspect of it. And the song, it's cool. It's mid. You know what I'm saying? It ain't it's nothing. It's a breeze. It ain't, it ain't trash by far. It ain't no, Reggie. It's, it's, not, it's a decent, it's not like a you bad said, song. it's a bit of a bop. It's a bop. But it's not a big standout. It ain't really crazy. No. The lyrical, like she ain't go crazy with her pen. It's like only the young. No. The kid choir on the hook, it was a nice touch. That was a nice touch. You can't touch. go wrong. <laughs> you can't go throwing wrong the kids, kids on the on ad lib. You can't. I with know, the I can't. Yeah, come on. We've been stop doing it. that. What we gonna say about that? Right. Stop it. Like, she, right. you know what I mean? That's a cheat it's code. Cute. She it's threw great. that on there. I think those. that was the producer's daughter's. Even yeah, better, man, it's man. like, come it was, on, throw the dope. home team in there, family. So, like, yeah, that cracking. was what it is. But it was cool. Like it was like a generic pop beat. The the the, she said she had a line where she said the big bad man something. I ain't even catch the rest of it, but I'm just like that phrase right there, just alone. The big bad man, just kind of. 
I don't know. That just give me like teenage mm. angst writing. Right, it's like, all right, that's kind of lazy writing right there. But I get it because it was like a song about the youth. It's for the kids, anti bullying, anti, you know, all of that shit. I get it. You have to watch this documentary. Though. I do really have to watch. I really want to know what your thoughts because you get into her songwriting process and you got you see exactly why. Like she even does the thing. The part of songwriting where you know you kind of hum syllables with melodies, mm-hmm. and there's no words, but you know you, just you gotta fill it right. in. Yeah. And then when you match in the words, sometimes they might not be the most uh, intelligent or profound, but it works <laughs> with the melody, and that melody uh, sticks yes, because you're working with I a get producer. That. But you can hear you when can totally that's the case. <laughs> the case. So <laughs> she's prime for that. I get it. That's that's what you cool. Do. But yeah. just know. I'm going to hear that shit, yeah. and, you know, it is what yeah, it is. Okay. And I respect it, and I get it when it happens, but you're going to get a mid. That's, you know, you're going to get a mid. It's, it's about mid. It ain't really a crazy stand-up. It's for the kids. It's and I ain't, you know, I, I I fuck with Taylor Swift as an artist, as a person, but yeah. I'm not the biggest Taylor Swift fan. Like, I don't Me know neither. her catalog. I don't know too many of her joints other than, the you know, the smashes, the shit that was popularized. But Yeah, absolutely. But, hey... Nonetheless, she's a motherfucking ally. Shout out she's to Taylor Swift. That shit is streaming everywhere. Go check it out. Go check it out. Only the young. Only the young. You can't. You can't be mad at a Only at a song attached <laughs> attached to a good sauce. I mean, you can be mad at it if it's trash, but this wasn't a trash song. So this Only is a decent bop. No, it wasn't and a it's trash attached song. to a good sauce cause. So salute to you, Taylor Swift. Salute Go check that you. shit out and let us know what you think. Is it a bop? Are we? Being too nice? Is it Reggie? Like, what do Is y'all think? Is it Reggie? What y'all think? It might be. I don't bunny? know. Y'all fuck with Taylor Swift or no? Hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you think. Come on, Swift. Like we said, either way, she's an ally and she fucks with the Q Plus community. So salute to her. Salute to the Q Plus community. And salute to everybody listening, watching, and tuning in. We and everybody that we reviewed man. on the show, too. Absolutely, like, shout out to man. all of y'all. You guys Keep are doing providing y'all thing. us with great content to look over and review. And we are really enjoying listening to this new music. Keep For it sure. coming. We encourage y'all got you guys to hit us up, email us, DM us. Reach out, let us know. Herbal.t.pod at gmail.com if you ever want to send us music. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, or excuse me, Twitter. Instagram, I had it right. Yeah, we're, not, we're on Twitter. We're on Twitter, Instagram, we're on and Twitter. Twitter. Herbal.t.pod. I'll let you know. Twitter, we're Herbal T Pod. So. That wraps up the music. That segment. wraps up the we music. We got into some good music today, we man. Sure that did. was fun. I hope y'all guys enjoyed it. I hope y'all. Please go check out this music, man. We encourage you guys. That's the biggest thing. Go back and listen to this music. Cause yep. we ain't just doing this shit for our health. We want y'all to go listen to the music and, and let us know, know what, what you, you think. think. But now that that's out the way, I think I want to stretch my legs a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Hit the pavement. Hit the streets. See what's going on. What we doing in these screens? You let me know. I'm going to let you know what we doing in these screens. Actually. Please. Here we go. So, was it February 9th? It was about a month ago. Okay. We was uh we was in these screens for real. Me and ET was in these screens and we was checking for these queer spaces for POCs in NYC. And here's the interesting thing about that. There aren't a lot of them. No. There's not a lot of spaces, and Spares. if there are, they're not promoted Few as, far as much as they could be or should, should be. be. Yeah, absolutely. So there was two that we went to uh, that week. No, it wasn't that weekend. Yeah, it was two that we went to that weekend. That Saturday, it was Dick Appointment <laughs> oh. at St. Vitus, which is in Greenpoint, which is located in Brooklyn. Greenpoint's a neighborhood in Brooklyn. BK, what up? You already. Um, St. Vitus is kind of a grungy bar, you know what I'm saying? Kind of a grungy, large uh, dive bar mm-hmm. that has a performance space auditorium in the back of it. So sometimes you'll see I artists. I see Williamsburg Bushwick is kind of set up like that in general. Yeah, there's a it, they, there's like a whole the move. lot of work. There's a whole lot of warehouses. Industrial. It has that industrial thing in the past. You have I like that shit though. Lot, it's like big holes in the wall. Like house, like. I think House of Yes or um, the Deep End, the Deep End, and this other shit. Holo, we were just there the other night. Yeah, so it's a few of them. So that's one of those type of spaces, and that was where Dick Appointments' last event was, and we happened to be there together. Cause <laughs> why? Cause we in these streets. Cause we in these fucking Come on, streets, man. So let's talk about what happened. 
when we get to dick appointment. See what had happened what was what had happened. <laughs> Where were you before? Um, you came. You came from home. Yeah, I came from the crib. You came from the crib. I was there early. You were there early. I was coming from. I forgot where. You but was I in was the streets. Already in these streets. You was already in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I was doing things. Mm-hmm. I was already having mm-hmm. my shit. Mm-hmm. And then I had to go to dick appointment. And by the time I get there, it was lit. It was so it was lit. lit. I couldn't. <laughs> Believe it, like there was a line outside for the shit, and it ain't like it's not nice outside. It's fucking. It's great. not it's nice. It's kind of cold. It's winter in New and York City. Security was acting crazy. Now here's the thing: like, they was dragging their nuts. Dick appointment is an event that's been going on for a little bit, and I haven't had a chance to go, so I was it's kind like a of few excited. Months now. Yeah, there've been a few months now. It's basically just a space where people, are, artists, or are, uh, Q plus artists or Q plus people can thrive and just be themselves. Hang and out, have fun, dance. Be as, be as you want to be. Party, dance. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like a place where you can meet people and you just don't have, you have all sorts of shit like that for the mainstream gays. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's a whole lot of parties you find them every weekend, but you know, Dick Appointment's one of those. And you know, I think I was trying to meet you, and I think Darcy was already there. Darcy was working the door. He was working the door. He was not working the door by the time I got there. No, it was he by the, by, security see, by the time guard. you got there, it was already kind of popping. It was lit, and I think they had stopped letting people in. So niggas was just partying. Like, the door was just like... And I did not understand. Because he was going back and forth with security a little bit. Like, because there was, like, a lot of people... The line started getting too thick. It was a bit of a commotion. So, fun fact. What's up? About that. What's up? What's up? I actually got kicked out for smoking weed at the bar before you got there. Oh, So, that's snap. how I knew what the situation was like outside. Because first, when I got there, there was no line. Right. I just walked right in the nah, door, went there was in. no line. And they was charging 20, but Darcy was at the door. He saw the kid. He was like, yo, don't even worry about it. We came in. Boom. I was like, oh, Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I was there to support. I'm like, all right, but boom. I was there to support too. I was not trying to pay. Pulled up, boom. Up. Nobody was in there. The back was already kind of popping, but the bar was wide open. So you know I'm a bar rat. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting at the bar chilling, right, posted right. up. And I'm thinking shit is sweet. I'm like, fuck it. Like they said we could smoke in here. Niggas was smoking in the back, but I'm in the front by the bar. So I was being extra with it. I lit the shit up right at the bar. Like a I was bold. Like I usually don't do that. That's that is bold. I usually don't do that. I don't. That's not. But I was I was of... cool for a good five <laughs> ten minutes chilling. Like I'm like half a blunt in. I'm like, all right, they let me rock. Boom. Before I know, it, security come behind me. Like, nah, nah, nah. Let's go. You gotta boom, boom, boom. Ah, ah, out, out, out. I'm like, ah, fuck. I had just ordered a drink. I'm like, chill. Let me get my drink. Boom, boom. He like, nah, nah. I'm like, all right, I'll be out. But they was cool about it. I mm. walked, and the doors was right there. So I just walked out the door, walked around the corner, finished the L. Came around, came back in. Apparently, I wasn't supposed to come back in, but I made my way back in. I got back to the bar. I was just sitting there chilling. So by the time you came through, it was like maybe another half hour, hour after that. Mm-hmm. And that line was getting crazy. It was like... I was, it was blowing minds by the time I got there. And it was crowded the in there, but it wasn't to capacity where they couldn't keep letting people in. So that's why I'm like, why they not just letting people in? They had just stopped letting people in at a they certain point. They just stopped letting people in and like And then, this. lo and behold... The line was right by the side doors, which yeah. the side door was like a front door. It, it was, wasn't on the side. It, it was like next to the front door. It was the front door. <laughs> so the side front mm-hmm. door, somebody mm-hmm. went out to smoke a bogey, mm-hmm. opened that shit. Somebody in the long line was like, fuck that. This, here's my chance. Broke in. Pew. And the floodgates opened. There was a lot of people. There was a lot of people coming out that door. Man, hold that on, that was hold, crazy. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you what was going on outside up until that point. Different perspectives. <laughs> <laughs> so he was on the inside. I was on the you inside, know what I'm and I was trying to hold him down from the outside, <laughs> trying to send him some fucking commissary, <laughs> some shit. The line was mad long. You know what I'm saying? Buzz already said he wasn't He's, coming because he, he was not. Back. He, he was, fell he all the way back. Like, so nah, it was just me. That's not but me. We was outside, and I was in the line. And everybody was conspiring ways to get past security <laughs> to fuck it because they saw everybody coming out and like security, we know his room in there. We know his room. Right, we all see security was saying, "Yo, nobody you close the door." They tell him you can't come out it this was way. Room. So you know they're trying to do that. People kept coming out, and then 
somebody was saying, why don't we just, you know, all right, next time somebody open the door, uh, one rush of, somebody planted the seed. <laughs> right. And the so seed. we just kept talking, they just kept like, talking so about it. And I'm like getting aggy. I'm like, <laughs> well, if y'all gonna keep talking about this shit, why not fucking be about it? Because you know I'm down for the shits. I'm gonna do the shit with y'all anyway. I don't give a fuck. How we gonna do this? That's how, how I'm doing it? dead ass. What like, we doing? so as soon as the door came in, I saw the Charge. rush. That was the opportunity. <laughs> And I was trying Yo, to do it on a low too. Like it was not none of y'all were love. love. I'm just gonna tell you that flat out. None of y'all were love. Nobody. I swore that I got into the promise. Y'all were land. not low. I went straight. I was looking for Earth Tone. Because first of all, as soon as you open the door, the bar right there. So like the club is right there. So as soon as y'all open the door, y'all just in the shit. I'm sitting at the bar. It's like a whole wave of it's people just coming in. I'm like, oh, people. y'all making it, it too hot. It must have been 20 people that hot. tried to get in, and I thought we got away with it. When I, I Not found at all. So we got away with it. We was I'm chilling, too. There. We was posted up for a bit, yeah. but that shit gradually shut down. Oh, shit. We, they we shut posted. the bar down. It was like, hey, we ain't... And it was disappointing because considering, like I said, there's not a whole lot of shit like that, but why do you have to treat it like that? Yeah. It was you know what I'm saying? They have to shut it down. And they didn't have to because... They could have just closed the doors, let it quiet, let it simmer down for a little bit, turn the music off for like a couple minutes, and then let it pop up again. They that, ain't had to shut it. Down. That's why I was like, and that's. But that's one of the reasons why we don't see those events. We don't see those spaces. Event it's because hard to get the venues that's going to allow us to do our shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a relax. problem when we did the cake video. Like, even though we agreed to a certain amount, yeah, it's like, like by told the time I tried was. to get back, I tried to get back with them. Like, they was not trying to hear it me about that, but doing they ended nothing. Up shutting down and going out but they ended up shutting yeah, down exactly. as it was. So, but she, that's the thing. Like, because there's not a whole lot of opportunities for us, you know, to even be out there. It's just sad when we do finally get one, and then they still treat us like we outsiders. Yeah. Like, y'all are fucking grungy ass. Y'all have freaks in there anyway. Like, what the fuck? Y'all like, got freaks in there Like, anyway. what the fuck is so different about y'all doing y'all thing and just letting us be ourselves? You That's know what how I'm it's going. That's how it is. But, hey, listen. Shout out to Dick Appointment. Shout out to the them. promoters. I don't know who run it. Do you know who run that um, shit? I know the DJ is, what's his name? Keon or Kenny? Kenji? I don't Something know. Something like that. I'm sure. not too familiar with them. I know, like, friends who know them. Right. But, they doing big things, and I heard about it. I keep hearing about it. I'm gonna definitely check out the next one. Um, there's another one, right? They're was, doing it constantly, so yeah, there's definitely a, follow them on Instagram. I think it's right, underscore right. Dick Appointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot and to tune in to the next. They always dropping the info when the shit gonna drop. Yeah, they so in, check them out in they in Bushwick. <clears throat> this uh, well, I don't know. I the, mean, we don't know where. Because the time no, they is going to drop. By the time this drop, it's going to be different. Oh, okay. So okay. go check out the at. Follow, follow the app. And, and they'll let y'all know and when, the they'll when the when the shit's yeah, happening. Exactly. You, already, you already know. Exactly. So the other thing, the other the other uh, queer space for POCs that we're talking about is by none other than Bugs Gutter, Q Plus Artist that we just reviewed, and his royalty and bars mm-hmm. situation. So uh, we showed up to that. As well at Gold Sound. That Sounds. was a two for one for the that weekend. That was a two for one, and I was, was out here. I was shocked to even see Big Tone out here in these streets with what me. What you, you mean? Know, I, mean, I didn't know. Even nah, you right. I'm an old nigga. I be in the crib. And he do be in the crib. I be trying to trying to see what the fuck he doing. I'm trying. To, he got. You be in the streets. You the you the expert. You the pro. I mean, I'm just trying to be like you a little bit, geez. just a little bit though. Every now and, just and then, trying to live a little. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? I'm not necessarily. Listen, I done not I didn't been out here. You know what I'm saying? I I, I slip out you know every once saying? in a while. You know what I'm saying? When the temperatures right. When the temperatures right, he gonna be definitely out out here. You know what I'm saying? Daddy and motherfuckers for the spring or summer. I, mean, I you bet. already know. You know what I'm saying? You we out here saying? in the streets. You know what I'm saying? We gotta we got a new responsibility that we done embarked on. That's you know what I'm saying? We got to be out here. We got to be touching these you artists. Gotta we got to touch the youth. We got to touch the... You know what I'm saying? Gr- put our feet touch to the, the curb. Put our ear to the curb. Know what's going Into on. Into the streets. We got to be accessible. You know We're what I'm accessible. saying? I want y'all to be able to come up and chop it That's up with us. It what's is. up, man? We're going to chop it Let up. Let us know what's going on. So I'm, we chopping it up at Royalty and Bar Situation. That's their comeback show. They had shut it down or they, they stopped doing it for a little bit. Uh, as of like late last year, mm-hmm. so they kind of they kind of took a little bit of a break and brought it back. And you know, royalty and bars is Bugs' event, and you know he usually has the Pink Gorilla team there. They always 
Yeah, um, well, doing it's Pink thing. Gorilla, Bugs and Chad. They yeah, all they put they the whole thing. They together. put the whole yeah. thing together, and we performed there as the Alliance several and, times. As, several as a, times, as a solo yeah. artists as the Alliance. So we support, of course, we support <clears throat> Bugs. We're gonna support them. So they came back February 9th, and we came back again. Some of the artists that I knew that we were reviewing would be there. So I thought, you know, it'd be a good opportunity to go. Shout out to Darcy. He went out and performed. Did his thing. Did his thizzle. You know what I'm saying? But that's what's up, man. We need, like we said, we need these spaces. We need these events. We need these escapes mm -hmm. for these artists to go to. Because where do you go? Where do you perform? What's the... What do you do? The recurring theme. Like, what can you depend upon on How a monthly we... basis to go and be like, all right, y'all, I want to get my chops in. Yeah. Is there an open mic going on here? Can I perform here? Can I get on the stage? Like, we need those outlets and we need those... Especially when safe spaces. And that's the important part is these they safe spaces for people to be themselves. Because sometimes you might be... You could be that transgender person that maybe just started, you know, identifying, but you have a you have a you have a, a talent that you wanna display and maybe you might be a little apprehensive to just go to a regular open mic because you might you don't know what's gonna happen to you getting there, being there. It might be a, a whole set of anxieties that come with that. If I'm coming be, to your spot, can you, I be Q plus and smoke? Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm about. Is there gonna be a problem with <laughs> any one of those things? What are and we so doing? Our spaces when we open, if when we get them, when? we're able to be ourselves, and that's the whole thing. It's safe enough to be able to go out there and perform and be as we are. Absolutely. And you know that's just that's the whole. That's the one thing I just want to celebrate. Like there's not there's not too many of them, and the ones that are but doing the ones it, we, do we got to support them. Absolutely. That's it's the biggest thing. thing. We got to support. Go out. Like we said, Bugs got a royalty and bars. That's why I shout out Will Sheridan doing Will the giant Sheridan, fest. Slay TV got Slay Day TV, fest. do the Slay Moby fest. fest. Moby Fest. It's a lot of these organizations out here doing their thing. And, and we fuck with y'all. We man. fuck with y'all. Really, Dick really. Dick appointment, follow them. Get into them. Come out to these events, support them. And they're great. Like you said, you might bump into one of us because we out here. More than street, likely. So. You know More what I'm saying? Likely. We out and about you know in the city. Saying? New York and is... And for everybody that's not based in New York, that's tuning in, man, right. it's the same thing going on in your city. Find yep. out what's going on. You know what I mean? Get involved. Be a part of the community because the community is only as rich as the individuals in that make it. So... We need more people. We need more artists. We need more talent. We need just more good energy, vibes, and souls to come out. And it's all about this community, man. It's going to thrive, like we said, if we push it. And we just here to be a catalyst, to spark it, to be a platform, right. to shine a light on it. And we're going to continue to do that, man. It's the Herbal Tea Podcast with your homie, Earth Tone. And your man, Peasy Peas. And man, he just took you to the street. You know he the expert of the streets, man. That's what he do. He this takes you what to the I streets do. and get y'all ready, man. You can't be coming ready. out the crib if you don't know what's going on in the streets. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Gay yeah, man. But you know, speaking of the streets, what we gonna do, well, another thing we like to do in the streets. We've been talking about it for a while, you Come know what I'm saying? Come on, man, you already know. You, you see the logo, man. You see the plant. You, you know what I'm saying? Marijuana leaf, man. Mary Jane. We're going to take it to the motherfucking smoking session. But before we do that, shout out to the Q-Bus community. Thanks shout for everybody out. that's tuning in so far. And keep rocking with us, man. Come on. We're going we gonna to take y'all somewhere real quick. Smoke a session in the smoker section. Yeah. Back at it. Yeah, yo. Welcome to another smoking session in, in the, the smoking, smoking section. section. Ooh, we getting there. Getting we getting there. there. Getting there. All right, all right, all right. What's popping? What's popping? Feel good to be out here. It feel good to be out here. We double dutching. Double dutching today. Definitely double dutching. Okay. Definitely double dutching. We out here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs. Oh, oh fumble. Foul, foul, fumble. Foul. Who's going to get that? Drop the L. When you drop the L, what is the penalty? There has to be a penalty for dropping the L. He dropped the L, y'all. I did. Was it my fault? I don't know. It was his fault because he gave it to me in it a was mad a good awkward hand, not a handoff. Hand. That was a good handoff. I gave it, it to not you smooth, too, like head, like no look. Boom. Fumble. I don't know. It's all good, though. We back at it. It's all about the recovery. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the recovery. It's good, and it's still lit and all that. Look at that. All you it's had to do is lit. hit it. Right. All you had to do is hit it. I but mean, you know, every time we get up in here, 
we get a little curious. Right. You know what I'm saying? We want to know what's going on in right, this cannabis right. marijuana culture. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's and the question of the day is, what is a bowl? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Check this out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here we go. We talk about what is a bowl, and guess what happened to me? What happened? I've never owned a bowl before. Okay. So, you know, but I've always, you know, been in, been, you know, generously invited to other people's bowls and they sharing mm-hmm. and we passing. Mm-hmm. So I decided, you know what I'm saying? I went and go and bought my first bowl today. What? Look at ever that. Ever in life. Look at that. Okay. Take that from me. You okay. know what I'm saying? See that handout? Are we know unboxing it live? We're going to unbox this oh, motherfucker shit. live. We got a couple rubber bands on it, but we not even going to. We ain't playing out here. Yeah, I see you not playing. That shit is well wrapped. You protected that motherfucker. The guy at the store. Not playing. You know what I'm saying? Out the village. That look top of the line, too. Okay. It is kind of top of the line. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Look at Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, for everybody listening, this man got a top of the line piece right here. And it's like, it's artsy. It's cool. It's sleek. I like the colors. All right, so the bowl is green. Right. It has like a little stand for it. See, you see those little pegs. It might just look like, oh, that's dead. That was cute to design. Right. But that's for it to sit down. Serves a purpose. It's like little stool steps. Boom. That's crazy. And then they got a clear nozzle. You know what I'm saying? But they got the ridges. You know what I'm saying? Ribbed for her pleasure. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for her pleasure. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yes. That's how it goes. Yes. I like when when they think of a bitch. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know what I'm saying? That's a nice piece right there, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you got like the top of the, But see, that's how you do it. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to get your first piece, your first piece got to be crazy. It got to be crazy. That's what I thought, because you're only going to get one first one. That was what the guy at the store was telling me. You popped your bowl, Cherry. He might have been low-key flirting, but uh, hey, you what? Shame. Spam. But everywhere I go, Every like, story you have <laughs> lately, I mean, <laughs> there's always some low-key flirting energy going on. I, I hear you out in these streets. Why not, man? You yeah. got the, you know what I'm saying? You I got the fire hope. tips now. I can't help you know that what I'm the saying? hot orange you out is here. doing things i can't killing them in the streets you know what i'm saying but okay but that's a nice bowl so what is a bowl so bowl is pretty much that's just like the nickname for the piece that you pack uh in the smoking pipe it's essentially a smoking pipe it's a piece um actually fun fact what's up fun fact the first smoking pipes were discovered originally in egypt Oh, yeah, they found shit. them shits in some mummies, some tombstones, um, and they was right next to the mummies. Osiris. So you know Isis. how they believe, you know, in the afterlife and everything, how, you know, bury me with my gold, my jewels, everything I love because I must use it in the afterlife. That's, you know, that was the whole thinking behind that. But they had they smoking pipes next to them. Let me hit you with a Jersey line. Okay. The ruler and the crew is Lord, Lord Ramsey and music is made by Mark the 45 King. Ooh. Who was that? Queen La? You are ready. It's the La La La, ding, la ding, from Halstead. Come yes. on, fam. We out here. Jersey historian. You yes, heard? you are ready. Queen but yeah, La, man, wrath that's, of my madness. That's crazy. Look at you bringing up <laughs> quoting Queen La and all I mean, that. I feel like it's, it's a Jersey month. That, it that, has been you know, a, it's a yo, lot of Jersey here. going it's a, it's on. It's a lot man. of Jersey energy going on lately. Right. Shout out to down. that. Shout out to that. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but yeah, man, the first smoking pipes were found in Egypt. And this was like in 2000 BC. So way back. You know what I mean? In Egypt. That's the first smoking pipes ever discovered. But, you know, they come a long way. Now they look like, you know, this. This is crazy. Um, but they usually come in like glass or wood. I mean, right, you can't right. have like a plastic pipe because that shit going to melt. Like, what you going to do with a plastic pipe? Um, but the glass joints are like the top of the line. Those motherfuckers, though, the side effect to that, them bitches get dirtier than the motherfucker. Like, it looks pretty and beautiful like that. So remember this image right here. Okay. Because after <laughs> some frequent use... Ooh, that boy. Oh, it's going to change. What you mean? going to change a little bit. You're going to see. We're going to come back and we're going to remember this moment and then we're going to come back on another smoking <laughs> oh session. Oh, my God. And we're going to talk about what I'm talking about. But, oh, my but, God. But, you know, you have the bowl and it's for a purpose. You know what I'm saying? We about to, we about to smoke some weed. So you got your bowl. You know what a bowl is. 
How you pack that motherfucker? How do you pack that motherfucker? So, you know, I thought about that, too. You out here. You out here getting toys and gadgets and shit. What you got? I what mean, else you get? I mean, what else you get? I'm in the mood to play. I so see. You splurging. While I'm out Tax here season. getting... Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Tax return. <laughs> Tax return. Come on, man. So, while I was out there getting the bowl, I was also asking our friend at the store about grinders. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? He recommended me a few. He also had me, you know, get a little bigger upgrade one to a good quality one. Okay, okay. And she got me a grinder with that chew. You Ooh, feel you me? You got the nice. You feel me? Nice gun metal. Gun metal grinders. Sheesh. Fitness. That's clean right there. You know That's like the, the triple chamber joint. It is. Okay, you got so. the, the Keith catcher at the bottom. I can already see the components. That's a top quality grinder right there. Mm-hmm. So you got yourself a top quality pipe, nice bowl, beautiful bowl, and you got yourself a top of the, the line, gunmetal, indestructible, throw it off the roof, it ain't gonna crack or break grinder. All of that. Come on, man. And the bag of chips. You, you out here, you did it big for your first ones, and that's how you're supposed to do it. I see you. If you're gonna do something... Like I've been told all my life, hey, do it right. There you go. You only get one. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> all right. So you got your piece and you got your grinder. So, I mean, you about to run this show. I'm about to just show you what to do and you just going to pack your first bowl. You know what I mean? How about oh, that? Oh, I'm going to do this? How about that? Okay. It's easy. So you're going to take your grinder. Have you used the grinder before? I've You've never used, the grinder used it. I've seen how You've it's You've used, used a used. grinder before, though. Yes, I've used a grinder. All right. So it's similar. You know the, the, the basics. Okay. Okay. So let's, we got our butt here. You know what I'm, you saying? I'm saying? I forgot the name of these shit. I think it's like Aquafina or some shit. Aquafina. You know what I mean? Grind. Grab a little bit of that. Grab a little nug. You know what I mean? That chick from Queens, Aquafina. Yeah. All right, so we're going to grab a little nugget. Get you nugget. a little bit of that nug. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's fresh. We ain't opened this one yet. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, you don't even need to do all that. Just, it's, it's already open, It's homie. already, it's already open. open. Oh, Just crack that right open, homie. Okay. You know what I'm, I'm doing? Saying? I'm doing a little too much. That's all. Yes. I got too hype. It's, it's, it's okay. It's cool. I got too hype. That's we out here. All right, so. Get you a little nug, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying a nice little piece right here. I think this is you good. right here. Yeah, yeah, put that in there. You know what I'm saying put, put that there. right on top, sit that back up. You know what I'm saying? You out here, you're a vet, bro. Okay, okay. So now that we got it, all here. right. So, what you do want to do though is kind of break up, take off of some of the stem. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Because these are like big knocks, so you want to break that off. It's like a tree, an actual tree. You want to take the, the bark off, take the bark off. It's only a little bit, but you don't want to be smoking that. All right, boom. Gotcha. 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 Nice little amount right there. All right. Here we go. We close you know what I'm saying? About to grind that up. Not and the, the thing with the grinders, the grinders come like they have plastic ones and they have metal ones. Mm-hmm. The plastic ones, they cool, but they're not, they don't have a lot of endurance. Like after a lot of use, they start getting dirty on the edges. Those just get stuck. It's hard to clean. Um, these you got to clean too, but all you got to do is kind of like soak it with like some cascade and water. You good. So I just twist it. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Get that nice and broken up. You know what I mean? What happened over there? You like you struggling? You good? I'm struggling. Good? I don't, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. You don't got to hear nothing. You good? Like, open that up. See what's going on. Take a peek. You know what I mean? See what you done did. All right. So oh. you good. It's all in the bottom. Oh, you, damn. You good. You, you still grinding. Yo, you listen. Good. It doesn't take much. You, I you, thought you, it was going to make a noise. No, bro. That's like, smooth. That's top of the line. I'm trying to tell you. Oh, it's, it, it turn, it's like butter. It's like butter, it's baby. Like butter, it's man. like butter. So then you want to open right. up the second, the catcher, the second segment, okay. and you're going to see where the tree's at. Wait, this, it's like a little compartment. This bottom one? This, this part right here. You want to turn. Okay. Damn. It's like a little, it's three compartments. Okay, so you got the top you. part where you grind the trees. You got the second compartment where it catches what you just ground. And then you got the bottom part that catches like the keef. Like it has a screen and it catches all of the little oh, dust Oh, snap. Shit. Look at yeah. that, y'all. There you go. And see, that's the screen and it sifts and catches that's all the of the screen. extra dust and all that shit. And this is what it looks like. Exactly. Don't, don't drop it out. off. I mean, you're going to spill it out, showing I people. Mean, I'm taking it easy. I was, I was like... <laughs> Dropping it everywhere. <laughs> Trying to make sure the people could catch what the action is. I hear you. I hear you. All right. All right. So now we got the bud. And then you're just going to take some. So you want to take your bowl. Scoop it. Boop, boop. All right. So 
You want to try doing that? Wait. So the scooper, they got a, they came with a. Well, that's for the key scraper. Okay. So that's that not for this. That's not no. for this. Okay. So I usually kind of tap it and pour it in, but it's a little tougher to do that. But do it over the glass because you're gonna spill something. You won't be able to catch that and put All it right. back in there. All right. Let's see. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Let's. Kid is packing a bowl. I'm packing a bowl. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have IKP packing his first bowl, his own bowl that he purchased. With his tax season money. With his tax season You know what I'm saying? Money. Brand new grinder. Just ground his first nug. And a high quality top of the line gun metal. Gun metal. Five star. Five star. I'm and a- then he done packed a bowl. You know what I'm saying? You got a nice little mount up there. Yeah, you get the little crumbs on the side. You know what I mean? Pinch those up. Throw those in there nice and neat. Right, You right. know what I'm saying? And we good to go. Now, the thing with the bowl is there's a little hole on the side. Mm-hmm. It's always on the left side. And it's a, a little hole. It's kind of like a, a vent. See it. Yeah, it's like a little vent on the side of the bowl. So it's important that you know where that is because you have to hold that when you go to pull it. So you're going to take the lighter, you light it, hold your thumb over the hole, over and the then you're going to pull at the end of the nozzle. Uh-oh. Let's see how we do this. Let's see how this go. <laughs> Let's see how this Drum go. Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at that. Nice. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, the Herbal Tea Podcast has done it again. And they got the Herbal Tea Podcast colors. Come on, colors fam. Colors on here. Green. <sighs> Come on, fam. I mean. You out here, man. I'm not look exactly at that. How you feel now? I feel great. Would you like would you, a taste? I mean, it, that would be nice. You know what I'm saying? Let me you see. Let me see how this thing hitting real you quick. Just a little bowl that you pack. I mean, I'm not new to smoking a bowl, but packing a bowl, as you already know. But this is pleasant. Oh, my God. Live on the air. Never done this Jeez before Louise. in my life. Jeez Louise. That's nice, man. Woo. For those of y'all can see, look at that. Look at the mm-hmm. look at the smoke in the, in the tube. You can just see the nozzle. But that's what I'm saying. Like, enjoy this because mm-hmm. it's going to be different a little bit. That's funny. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Facts. So now you know what a bowl is and you know how to pack one. Look at that, man. Informative. This is the part where like the little rainbow will come over like dun, dun, dun. The more you know. The more you know, man. <laughs> That's how I go here in the smoking section. That's how the it Herbal goes. Tea Podcast. Thanks for rocking with your boys, man. You know who it is. It's Earth Tone. And your man Pigsy. And we're gonna catch y'all later. But you know how we got to end it. Let me see what happened. We got to end, like it. We gotta end it on a high note. Let's end it with the piece. Let's end it with the piece. Go it. ahead. Go ahead. I'll All let right. you hit it. All right. Let's go. You know what I mean? We got to end it on a high note. We got to end it. Hit that this. right there. Hit that right there. There we go. There we go. Okay. Nice. See ya. On a high note. Peace, peace, y'all. Don't you know that from coast to coast, where there's dope, there's hope, where there's dope, there's hope. Sheesh. Wait. Is it lit?